a storm water runoff on major roads. Right. And that's in the area of $26 million. If we had uh, the money due us, this wouldn't have happened, this low volume of water. We would have our water plant up and running. The current system, as uh, DWSD and the Great Lakes Water Authority, uh, providing water to Highland Park through our plant and then out into the community. And the normal PSI is normally about, say, 40 to 50 PSI. In some cases, Highland Park's been known to uh, have water pressures that as low as 20, 25 PSI. And uh, just talk about uh, the evacuations here. Um, who's been evacuated? The uh, volume of smoke going east from the point of the fire. There's the uh, senior citizen high rise, the Gabriel, and the townhouses, and there's a school east of uh, this fire uh, location. We want to make sure that we evacuate the people so they don't get smoke inhalation. So that's what we're doing now. We have buses evacuating the residents out of this area. Do you have any numbers about how many you expect to be evacuated? Now, I don't have an exact number, but if you look to your northeast, you'll see the townhouses and uh, the high rise for the senior citizens. What's the name of that complex there? Uh, That's the Gabriel. Gabriel. Yes, sir. Uh, can you talk about the effects of the low water pressure? It's an obvious question, but uh, this has been going on. I've been here personally since 4.30 this morning. Right. Uh, I've, we're seeing flames, you know, still shooting up. Well, when you don't have the water pressure, of course, it takes longer to extinguish a fire. And um, it just affects everything in the city. Uh, we got to have a more water alert because of the low water pressure. The fire suppression is impeded because of low water pressure. And again, you're asking water uh, residents to boil their water? I'm asking the residents to boil the water because of the low water pressure, you may see some coloration uh, it's as a result of this major fire and uh, as a result of Highland Park not being on our system to provide the water that we are accustomed to. So are, when we see a situation where there's low water pressure, are we kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel? Is that why we see some brown water and things like that? That's primarily it. Yeah, that is a conclusion. All right, thank you. Mary, how does uh, low water pressure equate to needing to boil it? How does... Well, I think she just asked the question. It's, you kind of scrape from the bottom. You know, uh, the water pressure goes down. Normally, any debris or whatever is settled to the bottom, right? So it's coming out. So, yes, yeah, so that that's what you've been uh, concerned about, just the contaminated water. Um, so, hence, you want that people is to boil the water. Yes, absolutely. That's one of the the uh, results of having low pressure. The lower the pressure, the more apt you are to have contaminants. You know, so uh, we're trying to get this system with the governance squared away so we can get back on our system and get back to the norm. Did you get any response when you went up to Lansing? I was up there yesterday myself and the uh, council president. We hand carried a resolution that was... Uh, designed by our local government for the governor requesting that he act on uh, repairing the problem that we have here in the city with this water. You call it a crisis. Uh, absolutely. Because if our system goes down at this point, Highland Park can't get water, period. The only water we'll have is bottled water, meaning with the Detroit water coming in, going to our plant. If our plant breaks down, Highland Park has no water other than bottled water. So the governor needs, to, governor needs to act right away. This could be another Flint, you think? You know, I would say it could be another Flint, but the governor can prevent this. And all he's got to do is look at the facts. We're not asking him for a grant. We're asking for what our citizens have paid for the state. That's what we're asking for. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.